It's a real out-of-body experience. Here's your look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends House of X, Charles Xavier. Xavier reveals his master plan, one that will bring mutants out of humankind's shadow and once again into the light. Before we get a closer look at Charles Xavier, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. I'm going to take the tape measure right to the very top of his portable Cerebro helmet, and we're going to stop it right there. According to the readouts, Charles Xavier stands 6.4 inches in height. Switching that quickly to centimeters, the figure stands 16.3 centimeters tall. How does Charles stack up with some of the other Marvel Legends figures that we had a look at? I'm so glad you asked. Bringing in those other figures right now, we first start our reviews with Omega Sentinel. Not a bad looking figure, I still decide to keep her with the bald head sculpt rather than the longer hair. We can also compare him next to J-Lo. Before you violently type down below, that's not, that's not J-Lo. You're absolutely right, it's not J-Lo. It looks pretty close to J-Lo though. This was Moira McTaggart, which for some reason I just can't, there we go, can't get her to stand. And you know what? We'll just move over Omega Sentinel, bringing in totally disinterested. Oh my gosh, she doesn't even want to be here. There's Marvel Girl. Probably the weakest figure out of the batch so far. More so just out of construction. It's a good looking figure, but it just has so many, so many problems. This also marks the first time we're spotlighting a gentleman. Because up to this point, we've been looking at all the single ladies. I think it's a little bit more time now to look at some of the gentlemen that also make up this particular wave. Suppose the first thing we could address is the tri-sentinel piece that comes included with Charles Xavier. You can see it is one of the arms. Sort of a confusing arm to look at as well because it kind of looks like it should be on the opposite side. Just remember, thumbsies go in. Uh, thumbsies go in. We're going to go ahead and reach off to the side, bring from the black hole the tri-sentinel that we've been looking at up to this point, and we'll go ahead and pop that in. Wow, that was super easy. Does it stay in place? Seems to be the case so far. Now all we really need is one other arm and, of course, three heads. Luckily, you don't have to buy three separate figures. Could you imagine you had to buy three separate figures to get all three heads? No, I think Magneto is going to come with the three heads that you, we can plug into place. But that's sort of giving us somewhat of a makeshift workable Tri-Sentinel. I don't know. Still something about those ankles bother me. I'm going to see if I can... Is he going to balance? No, it looks like he's going to fall over. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be definitely an issue I want to talk about once I get this figure fully assembled. But in the meantime, we'll go ahead and just move that off to the side because, of course, we've still got some progress that needs to be made before we finish off that Tri-Sentinel. Instead, let's have a look at the accessories that come include with Professor X, starting first. Not necessarily something geared towards this particular figure, but sort of as an add-on, he does come include with the closed eyes version of Professor X. The same one that came include, I believe, with the hover chair. One figure I really definitely wanted to pick up was that Charles Xavier. Now that one did have the eyes open. This one happens to have the eyes closed. The neat thing about this is if you spin it around, well, not that you, you could already see it clearly there anyways, but just in case, spin it around to the back and you can see he's got that telekinesis telepathic waves of course being emanated from his head and it's just that's a fun attachment granted it's only just pegged into place it looks like it's actually been glued in place so you wouldn't want to remove it i really don't think you would want to remove it anyways if after all you want a charles xavier that doesn't have the rings around his head then again you can use this one with the charles xavier with the hover chair and again like this is just a swappable option to that I just want to be careful, though, because these are all individual ringlets. I'm actually kind of surprised that this wasn't just all one molded clear plastic, and then they just then mold the rings over top of it. But that's basically the Charles Xavier head that we get. Not necessarily suitable for this. I suppose if you wanted to, you could pop this head off the ball joint, but there's just really so much you got to worry about, the tubing on the side. Not to mention as well that this isn't really designed for this particular Charles head. I mean, I suppose you could heat this up if you wanted to and and root this onto the peg. But I mean, really, again, it's not designed for this particular head sculpt. So we'll go ahead and do away with it for the time being. Let's pop this back into place right now. The other thing that Charles Xavier has really only other than that head is a couple of swappable hands. Currently in the socket, you might see right now, he's got variations to relaxed hands. This one kind of looks like he wants to be handing out money. 
This one looks like he should be holding something. And then he's also got a couple of gestured hands as well. So again, you can, you know, go ahead and just pop these off. Super simple and easy to do. Just pop this off like that. There we go. And replace it with one hand. One thing I do want to mention about the hands is that when you look at the, the joint, see how the joint hinges back and forth this way? The interesting thing about this particular hand is it actually goes the opposite way. See that? The hinge is on the opposite way. Just a little point I wanted to mention. But we go ahead and just pop these hands off. There we go. Didn't think it was going to be so much of a struggle. And we'll go ahead and just put those hands back into place. And again, like you can, he could be giving directions. You know, it's just down the street. Just where, yeah, yeah, just down the street from there. Or again, you can just have him. And I was like that. I was like, you know, the fact that you can do that. Especially for the fact that the hands do have double bends in the elbows. For the most part, you can pull that off. There we go. I know what you're thinking. As for Charles Xavier, I will say there's things about this figure I like, but generally my overall feelings of this figure is just meh, meh. Now you're probably wondering, hey, wait a minute, how's Charles even being able to walk around? Good question. In the comics, actually, he took the body of Phantom X. Actually, Phantom X ended up donating his body, sort of lending it for the time being and being in the spiritual plane. Well, Charles, Charles Xavier basically walked around in his body and that would explain basically why he's walking, not necessarily confined to a wheelchair. The thing about this figure I wanna really talk about though is the choice of body that they decided to go with. Now, Charles Xavier in Phantom X's body, Phantom X is a generally lean character, but I don't feel he's this lean. I believe this is the body that they pulled from Pizza Time Spidey, which is a regular go-to Spider-Man, well, go-to regular Marvel Legends body if you want to get a really lean, thin-looking figure. But like even in the comics, Phantom X's body isn't this malnourished, isn't this super thin. I feel like they probably could have pulled a different body out of their tickle trunk and instead to get, decide to go with that one instead of what they ended up going with. Not only do I feel it's overly muscular, because I don't think even in the comics it shows as much muscle as what we're seeing in the figure, but I also just feel like the figure, I've never really liked this body. One of my biggest problems with the body is the fact that this area right here, I always thought was super thin. The torso wasn't so much the issue, it was the abdomen area, and I always felt it was super thin, especially when you had thighs shooting past the point where thighs, I feel, would naturally stop. Um, again, I just don't personally like this body, if you do enjoy this particular Marvel Legends body, all for you. But I just think that they chose really the wrong body, if you're going to be coming up with this particular Charles Xavier figure. The problem also goes with the fact that they didn't do anything in the way of paint. Literally, if you're just excluding the head sculpt, which we really haven't talked about enough here, but if you remove the head sculpt altogether, you're literally just handed a black Marvel Legends body with nothing in the way of paint. They could have added a little bit of highlights, and yeah, it has a black costume in the comics, but I feel like they could have done something. And maybe that's one of the reasonings why I'm having this sort of lackluster opinion of this guy. I mean, to the credit of the figure, the head sculpt is the only thing that I feel is positive about this. If you exclude, of course, the fact that it does come include with the Charles Xavier sort of Easter egg that you can use for another Charles figure. The only thing that really redeems this is this head sculpt right here. As you can see, he's wearing his portable uh, Cerebro head sculpt. I don't know if it's Cerebro or Cerebro head sculpt in this case. But you can see it's a portable version of Cerebro that he's able to wear around with him. It looks good. It does have some of that marbling I've noticed is consistent. Every single thing that has had this silver plastic lately, I've seen with Marvel Legends, seems to have this type of marbling to it. You can really see a lot of that happening with the head sculpt. I mean, underneath it, I gotta feel like if this was something I could remove, which I wouldn't be able to, underneath it, I would feel like it would be just the most boringest of head sculpts. Granted, all of this is all molded together, but I just feel like I don't feel like the head sculpt is really great either. I like that he does have the Cerebro, but I just feel like the head sculpt is sort of underwhelming for me. Maybe one of the things as well is if you really watch the read the comics, I feel like the head is larger than this, or at least the helmet that he wears. It's a really oversized helmet, and I feel like they may have even scaled it down a bit when it comes to this particular figure. To, again, it's credit. It's got some nice detailing done onto the back there. There's several different hoses. And all the ways that basically Cerebro is functioning, you can kind of see it on the outside of the helmet here. I mean, the helmet looks good. I just feel like it probably could be a little bit bigger. Or it could have maybe used a little bit of off-coloring or something. Maybe even just 
made the X area a little bit brighter. Again, I know I'm just only listing the negatives about this figure. I really generally want to find the positives in all the figures that I have a look at. But in case like Marvel Legends Professor X here, specifically this Professor X, I feel like it just sort of is underwhelming. It needed to be a lot more than what it is. And essentially all it really is, is a brand new head sculpt on just a very generic black body. On a body I didn't even like in the first place, getting reused yet again. Ooh, that's harsh. Having a look at the articulation here on Charles Xavier, his head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and it hinges down, but be mindful while you're doing it that you don't accidentally push and squish those tubes in. You certainly wouldn't want that to happen. But like I said, the head rotates all the way around. It is on a hinge ball joint, so because of that, the head does hinge up and it also does look down. Way, way down. That's, that's, too, that's too far down. He does also have the upper torso crunch waist swivels back and forth oh i just don't like that just don't like this body at all he does have the shoulder crunch so essentially this can move back and forth just to give you a little bit extra mileage with what you can do with the arms you can also bring them farther back than what you could hey look at this guy he looks silly his arms rotate all the way around as well he does have the swivel in the bicep he's got a double hinge on the elbow and he does have articulation in the hand i guess perhaps maybe one of the reasonings why they wanted to use this particular spidey body is because it also inherits some additional articulation that some of the other marvel legends didn't have like i think the shoulder crunches for example he does have a peg on the back of his torso that serves no purpose whatsoever with this particular version of character as for his legs his legs split out not a full split at all just due to the nature of the way that this body construction is, that's to the extent what you can actually get Charles Xavier. I mean, the man is walking. Let's just find enough miracle in that. His legs can go forward and back perfectly fine. He has a swivel three quarters of the way up the thigh, double hinge on the knee. And uh, let's talk about his feet. He does have these slightly larger feet, these duck build feet, simply because he's using the Spider-Man body. I don't necessarily find fault with the feet. The feet don't bother me as much as this area right here. Um, I like the design of Charles Xavier, specifically this design of Charles Xavier, the fact he's able abled body and able to walk around. But I really do feel like Marvel Legends fell short on giving us a better figure. Hasbro definitely fell short giving us a better figure here. Yes, he does have a black costume. Yes, he is a skinnier looking character, but I don't think that that was enough merit to pick this particular body out of all the ones they could have potentially pulled instead. Oh, what a totally underwhelming Charles Xavier figure this ended up being. And it saddens me because I dug the design of Charles Xavier in the comics and love the backstory of him renting out Phantom X's body while poor Phantom X is stuck in the astral plane. The idea of him walking around with a big giant Cerebro helmet, how do you mess that up as a figure? And yet, this is what we get, Marvel Legends series, Charles Xavier. First of all, I just have to maybe compose my thoughts for a second. If you look at the back of the packaging, the artwork shown here shows Charles Xavier walking around, of course, in Phantom X's body. He's a generally lean looking character, but not to the extent that we get here with this particular body. I ask you, Hasbro, of all the figures at your disposal, you have molds available. Why did you choose this particular mold? Because it's a thinner body, but it doesn't work. It never worked before for Spider-Man because I really never liked this body to be begin with. His malnourished stomach maybe worked on paper for Spider-Man, but I, I never really liked this body in the first place. But then you decide to use this body for Charles Xavier. And then on top of that, you don't do anything else with the body. No panel lining. There's nothing around his arms. There's nothing on his torso. You can clearly see it on the back of the packaging. Yet, yet we get none of it. None of it on this Marvel Legends release. Short of him just getting an interesting looking head sculpt, the whole figure as a whole is just so disappointing. Even the head sculpt, I feel, could have used some crucial airbrushing of a lighter blue. He has it in the comics in many of the panels, and yet they just sort of went with that marbled silver instead. The detailing on the head sculpt is good, even though I think the face could have been a little bit better. But, oh, this body is terrible. Terrible. And yet, this is the one that you decide to go with. Why? It really could have been the best figure, or one of the best figures from this wave. It ultimately, it ultimately leaves this figure being the worst, or one of the worst. At least Marvel Girl aesthetically looks good. I can't even say that for Charles Xavier. It's just the wrong body little too extreme with my opinions? Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of Charles Xavier. I personally think it's the wrong body that they went with. 
That's just my own personal opinion. If you disagree with that, by all means, let me know down below in the comments section. If you're all also new to this channel and you're digging all the content you're seeing, sort of digging also the fact that I really dissed heavily Charles Xavier here, by all means, hit the subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and yes, come back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't been keeping a tally so far, we still have to look at Cyclops, we still have to look at Magneto, and we still have to look at Wolverine before we finish our build of Tri-Sentinel. Technically, Wolverine really isn't part of that equation. We really only need Cyclops and Magneto before we finish our build, our build on Tri-Sentinel. And I'm really super excited for that. I hope that figure doesn't let me down because Charles Xavier here let me down big time. Big time. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.